Pew, 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 pew. Gang. Welcome to our reality. What's up, what's up, guys? We're back. Back. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew. Welcome back to For the Record, y'all. Missed y'all. We're here with a very special guest tonight. Today, not tonight. This is a night show, guys. I'm not used to this early afternoon shit. Oh, clearly I'm a creature of the night. Who the fuck are you? My name is JV Knight, a.k.a. Loverboy, a.k.a. James, a.k.a. Yo Daddy. Um, You're my daddy? In general, like plural, okay, like okay, not okay. just you specifically, just everybody. Understood, understood. How are you doing today, sir? What are we sipping on? Today we are sipping on mimosa, which is also a strain of weed I really like. Um, but is, Bars. Y- is yours more champagne or is it more uh, orange? I think the case of this one is more of a champagne situation. Interesting. I'm, I'm a bit of a... Of a biatch. So okay. I, I prefer the, the orange juice. No, absolutely. No, it happens. It happens. Um, it, it's a conversation I like to have at every table when we go out, especially for brunch. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you like your champagne uh, flavored like orange juice? Or do you like your orange juice flavored like champagne? I mean, it really is a matter of preference. You know? I'll be real. I hate drinking. I wish I could just take a pill and be drunk. <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> things where you could take a pill. I just don't know if you'll be no, drunk. No, I want to take a pill and be drunk. Be drunk. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just want to be like, oh, two shots. Two not have the taste of alcohol. Just be like, Ugh. I think that's a different thing entirely, though. <laughs> but I want it to be alcohol. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like drinking. I mean, I never. I used to not like to drink, but now I feel like my grandfather. You know, oh. beer belly. Yeah. You got a beer belly? A little bit. Yeah. It's there. It's you getting show it there. off. No, I'm. I'm very <laughs> insecure about this shit. <laughs> Sometimes my girlfriend touches my stomach, just you know, just like oh, and I'm like, yo, you better get your fucking hands off of me. I'm gonna be real. The quickest way you can get me to be like if i'm like just in a bad mood or upset you play off my hair or rub my belly i'm happy wow i'm so happy like you like belly rubs oh hell yeah yeah hell yeah interesting i just i don't know man I, I, I think yeah well that's good <laughs> luck i mean if it's good luck it's good luck but i just feel a little like like you're mocking me a little bit for touching my stomach you know you can touch my stomach if i had abs would you rub my stomach i don't know i wish i could like, I don't want to be pregnant, but I wish I could be pregnant so people could just be, like, openly touching my belly. <laughs> That's such a fucking weird thing to say. <laughs> you wish you were. I don't wish I was pregnant, but if I was <laughs> pregnant, I would like for people to touch my stomach. Maybe I, maybe I just want people to touch my stomach. That must be a weird. Uh, Should I just crop top it right now? Pooh bear it? I'm, I want to crop top, but I don't think I I'm think, that brave. I don't think people would like it. I'm, I'm not going to do it. But maybe, <laughs> but maybe because those people would be insecure to do it and they see people mm. like us doing it, it would open the gates. Right, I'm going to flash my belly. Three, two. <gasps> <laughs> um, yeah, bro. It's crazy. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't even imagine what it's like to have a baby inside of you. That's like women are crazy yeah. for that. They're women they're did they're something. Got, yeah, they did something. They, they, they did something. They snapped. Yeah, they snapped. <laughs> Props to women. That's hard, bro. I can't even imagine that shit. So who the fuck are you? Besides being JV Knight, what does that mean? What does being a JV Knight mean? Well, uh, so j- people ask me this a lot, actually. So JV Knight is a culmination of my. So JV's my initials, James Spera. That's mm-hmm. my. That's my real. My government name. That's the name the government gave me. And uh, Knight is actually my mother's last name. So JV Knight, okay. and it's it's really because uh, first of all, Knight is just like a badass last name. I think that's so cool that my mom's last name is Knight. It's so cool. But also, it she's like an only child, um, and and she's a, she's a woman. So. Uh, the name wasn't passed down, mm-hmm. and I wanted to take that. I think that it was like a family thing. I wanted to embrace that name too. Um, did you ask her? Or did you ask uh, Grandpapa if I could use it? Yeah. I never asked anybody. I don't ask permission. Oh, you're just like. There's <laughs> 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 uh, my name now. No, man. I uh, also just um, I don't know. There's not much other reason besides I just think it's cool. Sometimes I consider switching my my artist name up, but. Um, I don't think that's possible anymore. I think it wouldn't make sense for me to switch my name. I like I like I like my name. Um, Do people I'll ask you if you were knighted? I want to be knighted. I have not been knighted yet. God bless you. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to go to England and be knighted. I think only British people could be knighted, though, right? And you have to like do some cool shit with your life. We can look it up. Yeah, we should look that shit up. Has to look this shit up. Yeah, good. Um, but w- w- what? You're an artist, but what do you do, man? Right, right. Sorry, I avoided that question. Um, 
So he, I doesn't, make, he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, I make music. Uh, I've been making music since I was uh, about like 13, 14. Um, not seriously, you know, like it, it started off with just writing. I actually was a rapper first. I think a lot of artists share the similar journey. But I was like, I got into rap first. That was like the first thing I was really interested in. Um, and I was just writing uh, bars with the homies. And uh, shout out Sergio. Sergio the Great. Shout out OG. Uh, shout out Arzu. Man, I haven't spoken to Arzu in a long time. But we all started making music together. Slimo, of course. I mean, I have to Slimo. Yeah, that's someone I have to mention. Mm -hmm. Slimo's like one of the be my best friends. Um, and uh, from there, I think... Uh, my journey was I joined a group called Nothing, and we were a rap group for a while. We almost got signed, actually, okay. to a record deal. Um, you got signed, almost got signed for oh, nothing? Yeah, for nothing, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, our name was Nothing. We almost got signed to a deal, but I think egos kind of got in the way. We started fighting a lot. It happens when you're young. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was like fucking 16, dude. And then um, we, we kind of broke up. We just broke up. There was a, kinda, a couple times in the, in the next couple years. That was like in 2014. For the next two years after that, we were like on and off, like trying to reunite. It never worked out. And then we all just became our own our own artists. And uh, my journey was like creative liberation. Like I, I need to know, I need to be able to create without anybody. Like I can't rely on anybody to do what I want to do. So I learned how to produce. Uh, I've always been a musician. I've, I, I was playing in bands since I was in fucking elementary school. Um, drums, piano, now bass guitar is like my thing now. Like I like I love playing bass. But um, that turned into me producing my own music. And uh, since like 2017, I've been producing all my own shit and uh, recording my own shit and mixing my own shit. And then recently, I uh, in the last two years, since 2020, me and St. Pedro, Danny, a uh, great friend of mine. We started collaborating, and now he's like my go-to producer. He does me and him do everything together, and uh, he would be here right now, but he's recovering from a surgery. Um, not nothing serious, but okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he just couldn't be here with us. But um, that's kind of my journey as an artist. I'm also a, a film a filmmaker. I direct and produce films, especially short films. That's kind of like the thing that I'm doing now. Nice. Um, I've been doing that for. Almost the same amount of time as I've been making music since I was in like middle school, uh, high school, and um, now it's kind of like my career. The last three years I've been working as a PA, as a PM, more recently as a field producer for for some sets, some film sets in Miami, and um, that's yeah, that's kind of what I do: film and music. That's my main thing. At what point in your life did you know you were creative? Well, when when I was really young, I I wanted to be Elvis, um, and I think that's I, I think my that's a good question. Well, my my yearning for wanting to be like a f like a rock star, like a superstar, was when I was like four or five, and I was like throwing concerts in my room, and I wanted to be Elvis. I would just throw an uh, an Elvis CD and and just perform as if I was him. It's my grandma's favorite artist. Shout out, Mommy Fina. Yeah. Um, and then I think it was when I was in elementary school, like fifth grade, I stole a watch from a, from a homie's brother, right? And I, I just wanted a watch. I just wanted the G-Shock. I really wanted a G-Shock. My parents didn't want to buy me a G-Shock. Uh -huh. um, I'm not going to blame it on them, but I stole a G-Shock. And then I got in trouble. I got grounded for when I got caught. Uh, and then my mom was like, yo, you got to, like, I don't believe you're sorry. You got to write me, write me a, like an essay of why you're sorry. And I wrote her something. I kind of got lost in writing it. And I just, like, I just spent, I focused on it. I just sat in my room writing, presented it to her. I'm like, here, mom, like, I'm sorry. And I went upstairs and she called me back downstairs and she's like, yo, I'm not even mad at you anymore. Like, this is some really good writing. Like, you should do this. You should you should do this for sure. Like you're a good writer. And I just because of her, I, I started writing for real. And um, that turned into music and it turned into film. So I, I actually credit my mom for my creativity or rather noticing it, you know, and encouraging it. Like you're not even grounded anymore. Just keep writing. I want you to keep writing. Your shit is fire. So that's beautiful. When yeah. you have like that support system and like that early that early support. Um, I, I love your parents. Your parents are, are so genuine. They're so nice. The relationship you, your sister, yeah. and them have together, like as a, as a family unit, 
it's it's cute. Like yeah. it's, it's healthy. My kids are very open with each other. Yeah. My parents are like really like friends at this point. I mean, I don't remember when they stopped like being. With you. Yeah, well, my me and my sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, my sister and I. We like. I think we're all just homies. Like, and that's s- special. I mean, not a lot of people have that, and I'm privileged for sure to like be able to have like a really solid friendship with my parents and my sister and we're all in the same group chat we talk every day i call my mom for like hours a day mm-hmm. just tell her what i'm doing what i'm up to my ideas mm-hmm. um my do, you th- do you think you'd be here today without that like no support system? no not at all i don't know what i'd be doing if i wasn't um in the family that i'm in i have no idea yeah i don't i don't know what i would uh be up to at all and my parents are also th- like they're not like uh actively creative per se but like mm-hmm. They just, like, introduced that world to me in the things that they like. Like, the movies they enjoyed and the music that they enjoyed. Like, seeing the way they, like, were passionate about those things Mm -hmm. opened me up to, like, learning how to be passionate. How to be passionate, for sure. Like, I'm passionate because of my parents' influence. And that goes so far, you know? I want to make sure I'm like that for my kids, too. Yeah. Do you feel... You are passionate. As someone that knows you personally, you are passionate. Do you feel like when you're th- throwing those Elvis concerts, like that's out of passion, out of curiosity? Like when do you feel like you developed your passions? Yeah, I think I think I think I've had that since I was a kid. And again, it's like watching people being passionate, especially growing up with people that are passionate. It really rubs off on you, and it makes you want to be that way because it's such a beautiful way of being. I mean, passion goes everywhere, bro, and it, and it's definitely rooted in love. Like you're passionate because you love. Love makes you passionate. My grandma is like that. My 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 parents are like that, and uh, that's why I'm like that for sure. That's that's why I am who I am. But yeah, I think it was when I was. I think I learned how passionate I really was when I was. Like I would listen to music and just be like bewildered by it. Like wow, like I can't believe this is like hitting my ears the way it's hitting my ears. You know, and that's that's what really like pushed me to wanting to. Like and ultimately, my goal now, like as an artist and as a filmmaker, is I just want to make people feel the way I have felt watching and listening. You know, like mm-hmm. I've I've cried, I've laughed, I've I've been scared, I've been um, uncomfortable, I've been confident, I've been inspired through movies and through films. So I want to do that for for the people who listen and watch whatever I do. Interesting. Is, so is your uh, mic on, by the way? Yeah, you can hear me. You can hear me, right? A little bit. Which which one is your mic? Two. Two. Put me up, baby. Yeah, okay. okay. That's better. 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 Okay. Um. You have this the support system. You're a very friendly person. You're easy to talk to. Why do you insist so much on like this self creativity? Like not so much of a collaber. I I actually love collaborating. Um, and I, I hope to collaborate more on albums and film. Um, and, and, fil- and you know what? I think, I think I get my kick off collaborating through film. I think film is like the biggest collaboration. I mean, on a film set, you have 200 people. Everybody has a very specific role. Mm-hmm. And everyone doing their job makes the film happen. Mm-hmm. Um, what also fascinates me about film sets is you have every kind of job in a film set. You got food, you got medical, you have people in the medical field on a film set, you need a, a medic, you know, and they're medically trained. Uh, you got, you know, managers and supervisors, you got uh, accountants, producers, you got actors, you got all kinds of uh, people, special effects people, you got electricians, you got engineers, all in one place to make a film. And, I, and that's like the biggest collaboration. So, I mean, I, I think I am very like, uh, I'm a little introverted when it comes to the, the process of creativity, but it's probably because um, I think I just spent so much time like I need to do this on my own. I need to carry my own weight. Maybe it was due to like being in the studio and feeling like, what am I even like contributing? I feel like I don't have much to bring to the table. So I got so laser focused on making sure that when I show up somewhere, I'm contribute. Yeah, I'm providing something. I'm bringing value. Um, so I, I think it scared me for a long time to just like I know artists uh, that that when they show up places, they're not producing, they're not mixing, 
barely even writing. And what it's what are they doing? Right. I mean, you're just recording music and 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 in take it a step further. Like in the labels, there's artists that don't even write. They're just recording what's written for them and on beats that were produced for them, marketed for them. And it sounds good or got the clout. Right. And and it sucks because those are the kind of people that, that win before we win. But when I show up, I want to make sure it's because I could cover every single creative base. You know, I could film my own vi video. I could produce my own song. I could engineer my own my own song. So that's I think that's where it came from. It came from fear a little bit like. Self-sufficiency. Yeah. Self-sufficiency. I needed that. I needed to be able to like do this shit on my own. So you obviously produce for yourself. What was it about meeting uh, Danny San Pedro that you were like, okay, we could do something together musically? So Danny is a very interesting case. Mm -hmm. And this is like no one is ever going to be like, I feel I'm never going to meet like someone like Danny ever again. Danny is this person who is so, you know, like there's in, you know, nerd, nerd is in a bad term being a nerd. I'm and a nerd. Yeah. I'm a nerd for many things. I'm a nerd for film. I'm a nerd for music. I'm a nerd for sports. And it's, I, I see nerds as like people who are like just super interested in this one specific passionate. Yeah. Passionate about this very specific thing. Mm -hmm. Danny is a fucking nerd for music. Like, okay. He studies, watches, and when he's interested, he learns how to do it. He's this, he's this kind of person that he could do anything. You know, he could literally do anything, and that's what is so fascinating about Danny. And he's not he's not the loudest person in the room. He's very quiet actually. But when he starts, when you get him talking about certain things, you're like, wow, this kid knows so much about the things he loves. And um, he's also just like this specialist. You know, like he he you, you give him a, a laptop. You don't even need to give him instruments, and he will pop off. Like he will make anything you want. He can make bachata right now. He can make, he can make reggae, merengue, anything you want. Mm -hmm. Danny's like that. Like whatever fascinates him, he'll make it. And um, how did you guys meet? We met through the uh, Miami Warehouse. Actually, we were just talking about that. Uh, through uh, to Hippie Haven Miami Warehouse. Shout out Marcus Caesar. Shout out. Um, we met there. Uh, there was like an open mic uh, that they used to throw, and I met them there. And um, Slimo actually started working with Ricky and, and Danny and Fern first, mm -hmm. and then I, I I got acquainted with Danny, and, and it, was, it, it was the rest was history. I mean, me and him just get along so well. I'm more of the outspoken one. He's the quieter one, and I'm the one that definitely, like, brings the ideas to the table, and then he's like, okay, this is how we could fulfill those ideas. So we definitely have this, like, left brain right brain relationship going on where i come up with like the creative well he's very creative too but obviously but uh i come up with like the main ideas whether it's like a melody whether i have the lyrics whether i tell him yo danny wouldn't it be cool if we did this and then he's like okay this is how we could do it let's i love doors yeah yeah nice so that's that's our relationship we're very like we we really like bounce things off of each other and also, I have to say the one thing that Danny is and does that I've never seen in anyone else is his, like, 100% selflessness. Like, he is, like, he's never asked, how is this going to benefit me? He's never asked, how much are you going to pay me? He's never asked. And for that reason, I'm like, yo, Danny, 50% everything you get, you get everything we do, you're getting half. Like, you give me love, I give you love. Yeah, like, I, like, and without a question, like, Danny, me and him split everything down the middle. Like, when it comes to, like, royalties and, like, when, especially when coming up now when we're starting to book shows and we perform together, it's going to be like that, too. Because he's, he made the, Danny made the album as much as I did. Okay, so that actually touches another point I was going to ask you. So you're saying you're going to perform together? What does that look like? So Danny, um, he plays bass. That's like his main instrument. Ah, yeah. Okay. So that's how we would perform. He'd he'd be like the back backup sing the background singing and and, uh, and bass playing when we're playing live. That's what he does. And then we're gonna have a full band behind us: drummer, guitarist. Nice. So we kind of make up like a little band. And that's that's how me and Danny operate. We jam a lot too. Like he pulls out his bass. I get a drummer to come through. We all just jam. Get cute. Get cute. Oh, yeah, that, that's more champagne than, than orange <laughs> juice. That's good. The ratio is hitting. Yep, yep. Whoa. <laughs> that, like, echo was killing. Yeah. Um, 
when did you first release music? Uh, the first song I ever released is called Kill the Internet. <laughs> uh, those bastards. Do you remember, uh, do you remember Artie? Remember Artelan Rahimi? Yeah. Remember Adrian, yeah. Andrew, yeah, yeah, and Artie? Yeah, yeah. So Artie dated my sister, and when I wanted, when I was super interested in making music, I told him, and he, you know, he's into music too. He plays instruments, and uh, he helped me produce. Well, he didn't produce it, but he helped me engineer my first song, and we made it together. We put that out in like 2013, 2014, around that time. Why y'all trying to kill the internet? <laughs> I don't remember where I was, where I was at mentally. I think it was just kind of like. <laughs> I think I was kind of just thinking, like, this is shit superficial. You know, like, kill the internet kind of thing. Kill MySpace. Yeah, go get back to reality type shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Um, when do you feel like you started releasing music that represents JV Knight? Like what I feel? Um, yeah, I think it took me a long time, man. I mean, if, uh, if there's anyone watching or listening that is uh, trying to, like, start making music, it's going to take you a long time. I mean... The you know the learning curve is it's pretty hard and and it's, music is not easy but what it is easy is expressing yourself. You mm. just you just gotta great point. You tap into that eventually. I mean it took a long it took me a long time to find my voice. It took me a long time to find my my purpose as a as an artist. And that and it doesn't. I think a lot of people rely on having those factors to feel like they're doing something. But you got to show up every day and you find it. You, you show up every day, and one day it happens. One day you're just like, wow, this is why I'm here. This is what I like creating. This is my purpose. This is my voice. But it, it took me a long time to figure out like why I'm doing what I'm doing, if I'm even good, like what's the purpose of this shit, you know, what's the angle. I don't know. It took me a long time, man. It took me a long time. It's years. I, sh I mean, I've only been doing this for like almost 10 years almost, but just 10 years, no big deal. I mean, it's, uh, there's people have been doing this shit forever, dude. But I've been, like, actively creating for, for like, 10 years now. And um, it took me a while, bro. It's, it takes a long time. And anyone will tell you, you know, if it's if it's worth it, like, if you're doing something worthwhile, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen. Yes. It's a, it's going to happen over time. For sure. Journey. Yeah, it's so, such a journey. There's no destination. I think for a long time I was also thinking that way very, like, one track minded. There's a destination that I got to reach where I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be on top of the world. But that I learned, you know, pretty quickly that there's no such thing, you know, like even the people who are really rich and really famous, they're still trying to figure things out about themselves and they're still trying to fill in those missing pieces in their lives. So like, I don't know, man, that's not something to uh, aspire to. I think you got to focus on, uh, what you love and pursuing what you love and it, it'll all come. That's where I'm at right now. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. <coughs> I got a couple questions for you, actually. For me? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work like that, but I'm down. Yeah. So w when did you decide, like, I, w I really want to start uh, DJing and producing? Like, what was that What was that like for you? When, when did you discover that in your head? So I've been DJing, performing in public for about year and a half exactly now. It was April 2021, the first time um, I got booked as, as Lengua. I've performed a few different places. Was that, like was that your first name ever, Lengua? No. No. I had like, you know, Sasson, Charlie Sasson, Sasson Charlie, I don't know. Some I still have a Sasson uh, sticker. That was a separate project, though. I know. I still have it, though, yeah. on my computer. Which is funny, because Sasson Music, my, my YouTube vlog, which is still out there, if you can find it. Go check it out. Um... It started as a way for me to kind of share with people, yo, there's this beautiful community out there that has the very wrong impression of the majority of people. Meaning, people meaning Miami or beyond Miami? Beyond Miami, especially Miami, but beyond Miami. Like I think people think about electronic music, rave culture, and they think very ugly things. Oh, it's drug infested. It's people just go there to like do bad things and there is some of that. There, there's some of that in everything, if I'm being honest. For but sure, for sure. I think more than anything, it's release. You know, I think people go to church for release. I think people go and work out for release. I think listening to music and dancing and letting it all go is release. And it's a church. It's my church in a way. You know, it's it's community. Uh, it's fun. You know, I don't go out 90% of the time and get, like, fucked up. I'm just, like, 
I'm out there. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm True. You're one of the few people I actually run into at these events that's like, oh, bro, I'm just chilling. I'm not even drunk or I'm, I'm yeah. sober, just enjoying this shit. You raw dogging it, bro. You go to events I, raw I dogging ra- it. I raw dog it. Um, because <laughs> um, it's for me, it's it's just the community of it. It's the energy of it all. Um, so you know that vlog. Um, I had made three episodes. Um, and it had gotten some, you know, some little local hype. You know, I I did a uh, synth battle in Linwood on Tuesdays. I think that's such a cool little event and community. Um, I did uh, Forbidden Kingdom, uh, which is like this awesome bass festival uh, that was in West Palm and now it's in Orlando. Mo, you can walk by. Don't be shy. You can walk What's by. What's up? We got we got Mo in the house. Shout out Mo. What's up? Part of the MCR crew. We also got Steph from Prohibida and Diafano in the yeah, back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ooh, the modelos, let's get it. We got some modelitos. It's modelo time. Um, so, and then I did another episode on like warehouse culture, like featuring Annex, uh, before I even joined them. So crazy. Um, and when did you join Annex? Summer 2020. Um, that was a good year. Terrible fucking year. It's so a terrible <laughs> year. I actually honestly, it was it was life changing for me. I'll, sure. I'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But um, so that vlog, like, I just wanted like to give platform to people. So now being here on this show, for the record, here on Miami Community Radio, um, that in a way is fulfilling what I was trying to do there. So like, the fulfillment, you know, I'm, it's the same. It's a little bit different because I'm not out in the wild. I'm bringing people in, but it's still providing platform. It's still giving people their voice, their story. Um. So that's the story about Sasson. Yep. Um, Lengua came around when I joined Annex and we were doing our first uh, event, warehouse event back from COVID, post COVID. Uh, and we had uh, Low Earth Orbit, we had X13F, we had Book J York, and we had like one more slot. And they were just like, why don't you just play? And I was like, I'm down. And like, I hadn't really played much techno at that point. So. But that's really where I was like headed towards that sound. Facts. So I was like, I need an alias to, to really describe what I'm going for. I think for me, DJing is, aside from release, it's like power and control. Like I'm such an easygoing person in my everyday life that Facts. being a fucking commander of the dance floor, making people move and wiggle how I want, that's power too. That's me. power. It is power. Um, and I needed a name to reflect how fucking nasty I wanted, like, the dance floor to be. And, like, I want people to look at my name on the line and be like, ugh, lengua. Lengua. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Facts. And I played at Boombox that night in April. Uh, I popped off, and that led to me getting booked, opening for Danny Days a few months later. Um, and that led to playing more at Boombox. That led to a lot more bookings. That led to... Um, to where I am today. I'm very thankful for that. Facts. You know, um, Electro was in- introduced to me, like, in, I had listened to Electro for a while. Um, I just didn't know Electro could be played that fast. And I was like, whoa, hold up a second. And that kind of changed my life a little bit. Um, and truly, like, in the, the past year and a half, it's like, okay, I'm a techno DJ. Oh, I do techno Electro. And it's like, I've kind of gotten to the point where it's like, fuck a genre. It's more... I'm going to play hard. I'm going to play fast. Yep. I'm going to make people move. Yeah, for We're going to sure. sweat. Yep. Um, and if it fits the mold, if it fits the sound, if it fits the vibe, I'm going to play it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's how Absolutely. I got it here, too. The, the, you know, the jo- genre-defining stuff is, like, uh, or rather, like, when you're figuring out what you're doing and, like, trying to pinpoint it, yeah. it gets a little tedious. I mean, especially you don't want to, like, put yourself in a box. And, like, I like that you said that because – for a long time, me as an artist, I'm like, what the fuck do I even make? I don't know. Because uh, at first, it was rap, like I said. Yeah. But then it turned into fucking rock, alternative, R&B. So what the hell do I do? Now, th- these days, I call it alternative just because it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to call it. You it's guys, alternative rap. It's alternative rock, rock or pop, whatever. Dance. Um, facts, facts, though. I, I used to call you a rapper. I don't call you a rapper anymore. Yeah, same. I used to call myself a rapper for uh, for a while, and I yeah. don't. I just it's just a disservice. I mean, it rap is. is a very specific thing, and I don't. I barely even do that. You know. Yeah, I think some of these, like you know, obviously putting things into genres is good, just to get like a general vibe sense. But like, at the same time, and this is true for a lot of things in society, um, putting a box on something that's not necessary could actually defeat the purpose. It could actually for make sure. things worse. Yeah, for you know, sure. Whether it's you know, putting a label on a sound, mm-hmm. putting a label on people, you know, 
label sexuality, identity a lot, like, does it really fucking matter? Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Um, I think it also just takes away from me as an individual, you know? Um, yes. as aside from being an artist, I mean, it takes away from who you are. I, I, I always get mad when when things like, like w with labels because it's like you're doing a disservice to yourself as an individual when you, oh, I'm just this, I'm just yes. that, you know, like, it does feel like just, you know, and I, I think as an individual, um, I, it, you know what it is? It's complacency in like getting to know people or getting to understand things. It's like, it's mm -hmm. easier to just be like, oh, it's this. Oh, I get it. It's, yeah. it's this. I get it. You know, instead of like digging deeper and figuring out who this person is, what this is, who you are, you know? I think that also has to do with a lot of people just being wa like sub subconsciously just wanting to be told it's something or be told an idea, be told a thought versus doing their own critical thinking and thinking maybe it's this maybe it's that maybe Facts. it's not this maybe yeah. it's not that you know it's yeah absolutely I think people just want to be like yeah i like rap i like you know. true i mean it's easier it's just an easier thing to grasp onto something to grasp onto my favorite story in music one of my favorite stories in music history is back in like the the early 70s um led zeppelin my favorite band um they released their first three albums, Led Zeppelin one, two, and three. Or it wasn't their first three technically, but their first like big distribu distri um, the major label. Oh, that's fire! Yeah. <laughs> their first major label releases, their first three was Led Zeppelin one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and music critics were going at them, about just what? about just like being like they thought they were very snooty. They thought they were very full of themselves. A lot of there's a lot of bad reviews, and Led Zeppelin kind of couldn't escape it, you know. They uh, they got a lot of comparisons, and and it was just like kind of rough in the critic scene uh, mm -hmm. for Led Zeppelin. Uh, but my favorite story is when they started making Led Zeppelin four. They were you know they you know they were signed to Atlantic, and they were trying to figure out what could we do for this fourth album that could separate us, you know, like what how could we find ourselves as an as an individual band, like you know. Uh, separate ourselves amongst the crowd of all these bands because you know, we weren't there obviously but like in the 60s and 70s there's a lot there's a lot of saturation in the rock scene um that was like the golden age of rock but like there's a lot of saturation just like in these days you know with the internet there's a lot of saturation in artists so led zeppelin they were trying to figure out what they're going to do for their fourth album um their cover art if you guys look at the led zeppelin 4 cover art it's it's just like a fucking farmer guy <laughs> It doesn't say Led. There's nothing on the cover art. It doesn't say Led Zeppelin. It doesn't say Led Zeppelin Four. I actually have them all on vinyl. Yeah, it doesn't. I think it may have the Atlantic logo on it, but there's like nothing on the cover. There's nothing on the cover. Uh, no, I think yeah, it's on the back. There's maybe. nothing. And when when they went to release the album, they told the record label told all the record stores that they gave vinyls to, mm -hmm. don't put this in the Led Zeppelin bin. Don't don't say it's Led Zeppelin. No one, no one should know this is a Led Zeppelin record, and it critics when they heard that album, they're like, "This is, this is Led Zeppelin! Oh my God, this is amazing!" And it's like, it's funny how you know, before when it when it said Led Zeppelin, when it said what it was, they were so harsh on them, but for some reason, doing this really mysterious thing, like uh, it exploded their popularity, and that Led Zeppelin Four was really like their popular release, and that's my favorite. One of my favorite albums of all time, my favorite Led Zeppelin album is Led Zeppelin 4 because it was just so mysterious. People just put the label, oh, Led Zeppelin, and suddenly they were like disconnected. They're like, yeah, oh, facts. no, I don't want to listen to it. Because all their preconceived notions of who they were and yes. what they stood for, like they're like, I don't care about this. Mm -hmm. But when they didn't have, when it didn't say Led Zeppelin and it was just this mysterious, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this mysterious album, they were like, I fuck with this. This is so creative. I love this. This is, this is exactly what Led Zeppelin should be. People do that, man. People like they they put labels on you, and that's how it goes. But I, that's my favorite story, and that's I want to do some stuff like that in the future. I want to drop something like kind of like under an alias or do some weird shit. I want to do some weird shit with my releases for sure. I want to do it eventually, like just drop like on a label or something. I was actually like speaking out loud. I just had thought about this, like making like a like a random label where people could like anonymously submit with an alias and then just release music, and then it's just like some gas. Here, fuel it up. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, on another note, with the same same conversation, but on another note, in film, I was like, I've been thinking like long and hard about, you know, how could I separate myself as a filmmaker as well? And um, I'm really into horror movies. Uh, I love I love scary movies. It's like my favorite genre. And there's, I've been thinking about, you know, 
found footage movies. Maybe you're, you know what I'm talking found about? Footage? Found footage. Found footage m- scary movies are like uh, Paranormal Activity. That's like the main. That's like really oh, Paranormal oh, Activity okay, is okay. really what like launched the found footage horror genre. Like VHS. VHS. Okay. I love VHS. Um, Cloverfield. Clover. Okay. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I I love that because there's like there's videos on YouTube where that they're like really creepy videos of like you know like ghost videos and like whatever. Like the point is that I've always wanted as a filmmaker to create a fake YouTube channel. Uh, that's like some really mundane how-to kind of YouTube series of videos that are just like, it's a normal person posting normal things. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of all the videos that we post, there's like one video that's like fucked up, like and scary and weird and like kind of out of the ordinary. And like, that's the short film. Like that's the film. You know what I mean? Like some really weird, mysterious shit. Don't put it under my name. It doesn't say that it's a scary movie. But I've always wanted to do that and like have people discover that video like on Reddit and like on YouTube and people, have you guys seen his video? Like Mm -hmm. this average YouTuber, like some weird shit happened in his video and it's like Mm -hmm. unexplained. And never post again. That would be Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I think that'd be a cool way of releasing a short film because it's Mm. like we're we're faking it. You know, we're faking something real. Like, and I'm so interested in doing that to to people. Like, wow. Like, You see, that's cool for like a a horror film. I've been seeing that lately. There's this dude I, I follow, the real Tarzan. Yeah. He's been posting lately like, fake animal videos of like giant anacondas like wrapping around a bus I'm word like, th- oh word i'm like i thought he does like real shit though he doesn't he does i'm like why are you posting this fake shit like that's whack. weird that's whack. whack but that's too obvious everyone knows who tarzan is no one's gonna believe like some weird shit's happening i don't like i don't, I don't get why he does that when he's like shows all those raw real things he's from miami right he's from here i think so he's like somewhere right yeah. here yeah because when, when i first started following um uh who's who's the guy canela the deer, Canelo oh, Savage. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah? is yeah. that his name? No, no, the the deer's name Canelo. Canelo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, oh, brother nature, brother nature, brother nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was Canela for for Halloween one year. Were you Canela? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember you were a deer for Halloween. Yeah. Yes, that was savage. Um, here I'm trying to show you. This. Look, look at this fake ass video. Oh, I've seen that go around the internet a couple times. That's like the yeah the snake wrapped around that. Yeah, it's yeah. fake as fuck, dog. Like, w- look at all this raw shit you're sharing, like. <laughs> like that's a real like ape. Yeah. You know, and l- look at this Komodo dragon fucking up some carcass. Like that's I raw. Fuck with Komodo real. dragons. So why, why are you sharing this this fake shit? Is that the only fake thing he did, or is it? Uh, that I've seen lately, yes. Oh, but that's just like a popular internet video that's gone around. I get it though. I, I guess. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I w- I would love to do some weird, weird shit that's pretending to be real. But the it's horror. It's film. Yeah. It's, it's meant to be. It's meant to be it's fake, different. yeah, for sure. Um, but back to the music, I was going to ask you. There's a question I wanted to ask you. Um, do tell. So Miami, in terms of music, where do you where do you think we're at right now, and then where do you think we're going to go? <laughs> like, in, as, uh, it, it's hard to describe because there's so many, like, sub, you know, like there's so many, like, little, like, niche groups of, like, music lovers in Miami, and, and the, the scene is, I could at least speak in my perspective, like, I think the biggest scene that I was following or a part of for a long time was like the rap community of Miami mm-hmm. and it's a w- it's in a weird place right now I mean there's not really many big artists doing it right now like Denzel was like the biggest yeah. X was the biggest and yeah. their X is no longer here and Denzel is kind of like worldwide at this point so like f- speaking for the hip-hop community here I mean I really don't besides like the Kodak, uh, there's yeah but again like those Ross. are people who have really crossed that threshold. I'm talking about like people who are like up and coming. Like, um, I don't really see it as much as I did back in like 2016, 2017. So I wanted to ask you, like, where do you, in your perspective, where do you think we are right now, and like, where do you think we're, we're gonna go? Miami does not support art as a general statement, and this is this is speaking generally. Like, we are a city that's founded and built on tourism, hospitality, um, clout, uh, flexing things that we don't even fucking have, and it's sad. So on a general basis, we're not supporting. But that's changing. That's The tide is slowly changing. It's heading in the right direction, slowly. And this is through diligent work of a lot of smaller creatives banding together 
supporting each other, uplifting each other, providing platform, things like MCR right now, uh, things like the Shotgun Office, shout out, you know. Shout out Shotgun. Um, you know, there's a lot of small organizations uplifting each other, and they're getting noticed, they're getting the attention. Uh, the biggest example I could give you, we were talking about this two days ago, Nick Leon. Yeah. You know, Nick Leon went from being a bedroom producer, DJ a year and a half ago, two years, to this fucking crazy wave of of producing for Rosalia, for Isabella Love Story, you know, being RA Mix of the Week, signing to Universal Latin, you know, uh, being on Homer Radio with Frank Ocean. Like, what? That's crazy. You know, so, like, there is recognition coming. Mm-hmm. There is support coming. And it's... I think the... Right now, what's getting attention in Miami, particularly, is the electronic scene. Yeah. I think, you know, it's the Latin inspiration is really getting attention. I think some of the other, uh, like, the locals who, like, are, um, they perform a lot of got space, the ground, you know, Floyd. Like, those people are getting a lot of hype right now. They're traveling. They're getting booked. Um, the rap scene, you just kind of spoke to it. You know, there's there's some stuff, but, like, you know, it's. It's a weird place right now. It's a really weird, weird place. Who the hell is calling me a bitch? Sorry, come on, guys. Go. Come on, guy. <laughs> Actually, we should lower yeah. this channel floor. My bad. My bad. <laughs> um, it's my laptop. It really wouldn't have made noise if it wasn't that my was laptop. that was a record deal, bro? They were calling you. No, no, it was my <laughs> girlfriend. Oh, okay, true. Hi, Janisa. Hi, Janisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and rap in general is just like a clout game. In For sure. Generally. Um, the alternative rock, like punk, that scene doesn't exist, period, in the U.S. right now. Yeah, well, like, yeah, not really. Not really. In spurts, not like in not spurts, as a yeah. group, not as like a rising. Like not like rock maybe 15 years ago. Right. There was uh, rock stations that were like modern rock. You true. Know. Name, your, ma- name your bands that are like dropping shit now. That are I, I, there's a couple that I like, but only because I'm really interested in like punk. Exactly. Like punk is like one of my favorite rock gen- subgenres. So like show me the body. They're coming to Miami. I want to. Okay. We should go to that show together. Where's actually. that at? Where? Um, I don't know. I gotta look it up. Okay. Show Me I'm the Body down. is from New York. Okay. There, it's a group from New York. They're a band. Mm-hmm. Fire, bro. So fire. Um, Turnstile. I like Turnstile a lot. Oh, nice. Yeah, those are but upcoming bands. But you're right. My, my point is, like, okay, there's Boombox doing shows. True. Uh, Shout out Boombox, man. Shout, Shout out, out Mango. Lads there, and all of them. There was, um, what's this place that just closed? Or, like, maybe closed? Uh, Las Rosas. Las oh, Rosas. Las, Las Rosas, Rosas yeah. Um, there's not a lot of places, you know, supporting alternative music like that right now. And I don't know. I think there's people that listen to it, but maybe they're just, maybe they're ignorant to knowing where they could go listen where to it. Where they could it. go to get that uh, fix in their own city. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Miami, it's interesting. Cause it's, it's not that there's not an audience. That's not the thing. The thing with Miami is that there is uh, a lot of people who... You kind of touched on it, where it's like it's, it's a city of people flexing on each other. So as yes. artists, we don't want to come together because it's yeah. like this giant competition amongst, yeah. especially yes. in like the hip hop community. It's like I'm better than you, so I don't need to be around you, and I don't need to give you your props. But I'll be the first to, like, maybe not the first, but I'll be one of the first to tell you, like I am not afraid to reach out to people and tell them I respect you, I love you, I love what you do, I'm a fan. Like and and the more we have that, the better. The more we have artists that are like, yo, I'm a fan of what you do, even though I'm an artist as well, the more we could come together and the more we could like, like I always think in my head, bro, like if I don't make it, if I don't make it right now and I have a homie that's making it, then we're good, you know? But if, and then like if I make it, my homies are good. Like, like I'm putting on for everybody. And like that mentality, you see it from different communities, like Chicago, like there's like, Chicago has that kind of mentality. I know that for a fact. I know there's a lot of people in like LA that have that mentality. Like in the in the LA music scene, there's a lot of artists that have that mentality. Like if I'm going up, you're coming with me. Miami doesn't have that. Not really. Not really. And um, I, w- I want to help change that for sure. I know. I know. I know you do as well. And like all of our friends want to change that. Um, but with audiences specifically, like there's audience in my, there's an audience in Miami. I think for most of the music that we like. Like, I'm thinking alternative, like, bro, like, there's a huge audience for people like Steve Lacey, yeah. people, and they would buy fucking tickets. But if I, would, if I would play some music that's just like Steve Lacey's music, right, which I've gotten a lot of comparisons, like, 
they don't know who I am. I'm not going to buy a ticket to JV Knight. I don't know who JV Knight that is. That goes back to the whole uh, Led Zeppelin conversation. It's like, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, Steve Lacey. Yeah, right. And they then, like, they block right. it. Right, exactly. Like, you know, it's, they put a title to it. They put it, you know. If, if there isn't a trend, if it's not trending on TikTok, yes. I'm not going to buy a ticket. Sadly. That's like, sadly, where Miami is at. New York is better in that way where it's like, I don't know who this is, but I'm going to show out and like w- come to this show. I know for a fact mo- places like Montreal are like that. I know pa- places like Paris is like that. London is like very susceptible to upcoming, like to supporting upcoming artists. And that's like why I wanted to, I, w- I really want to take the Jimi Hendrix approach and try to make it big overseas, like somewhere like London. Like I, I know for, f- me and Danny talk about this all the time. I know for a fact, like songs like Off Rip, or like uh, I don't want to talk about it. The first song, or like last night, those songs would go off in London. Oh, yeah. London would love those kind of like you know sounds. So like I, that's sad that I have to think outside of my own city to find some support. You know, like and I, I wish it could change, but it's just it's how it is right now. I'll be honest, most of my streams on SoundCloud are from London. Like yeah. that's where people are looking up more rave music, more like yeah. techno electro. Yeah, there's again like there's cities that are more susceptible to supporting upcoming artists that are unknown just because the sound is dope because the music is good that's it you know it's just different mentality you know uh, i talked about like self like selfishness here in miami you talked about it too vip culture i yeah, think it's, it's, it's yeah like everything is vip here if you're not in the vip what the fuck are you doing like, and that's how how people think legit like they're like oh i i can't wear i shouldn't wear high heels like i can't have bottle service i can't be like it's weird people don't want to be on the same level as others even though they don't have like the money or status they just yeah. want to pretend like they do yo S- club space didn't let my homie in the other day because she was wearing Bur- um, burks birkenstocks yeah do better they are like yo you can't come in you're not wearing the right shoes what so birkenstocks what? They, their shoes they're expensive dog and they're she was wearing sandals i mean sorry socks with their sandals like they're not even sandals though birkenstocks yeah yeah, VIP culture is weird because they won't let you in with specific things. Like, but I've, I feel like I've seen people come in with like fucking bikinis. Bro, fuck yeah, they do. So what the fuck? I don't get it. Yeah, it's weird. Club space do better, man. Yeah. But I I actually really appreciate what uh, club space and uh, people like like uh, David Sinopoli. Mm-hmm. I appreciate those people for sure. I mean, I I think uh, I think uh, the. I think they're helping out a lot with uh, up like rising artists in, in some ways, you know. For I effect. think they definitely support. I definitely think they're put under a microscope because there's almost no other wa- no other place where people could like have a goal like, oh my god, my dream is to play there. My dream, you know, like I think sure. so I think they're put under a microscope in that sense. For sure. So yeah, every all the focus is on them. Exactly. You know, so that's a great thing for them. It's also a bad thing. People like you know when there are mistakes, it's hyper focused. Um, Miami needs venues. For sure. There's mm-hmm. I've always said it with film and it's the same with music. There's no foundation. Yes. There's no s- foundation in Miami, structural foundation, w- physically and and in a l- on a level of just like support. There's no foundation. Well, that's what's changing now in Miami cuz there's there's an underground foundation now. That does exist. The middle and high ground is where we're lacking. There's no mid-sized venues. There's absolutely no mid-sized venues. There was ATV gone. Big venues, their space. Grand There's Central gone. Gone. Uh, what was the one in Miami Beach? Um, I'm spacing out right now, but uh, spacing out. Um, there's large venues. There's Treehouse. Yeah. Big space. Gemma. Yeah. There's not much. There's Great not much. Shit. There's not much for artists who aren't like completely unknown, but aren't super big. That's that's where I feel like I'm at, and like. There's not a real space for artists like me mm-hmm. that it's like you're one. You're like, a, I mean, it's this is unrealistic, but like a lot of us think there's like, you know, this song is going to do it for me. This performance is going to do it for me. I'm going to make it big after this. But the reality is there's like there are big venues that if you would perform there, mm-hmm. people are going to know your name after that show, you know. And unfortunately, <laughs> I just don't think it's like that. For in the DJ scene in Miami, you spin at space in, pr- on in, in like a prime time like slot time mm-hmm. slot. You're kind of blowing up, bro. Like that like that could change. That could absolutely change yeah, the trajectory. You, you and I, I have ch- seen it change people's yeah. trajectory yeah. entirely. Um, but that's not true for the rap scene. It's not true for the alternative scene as much. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Like I think there's an underground foundation right now, but Thanks. there's not that 
there's a huge leap until the next. Like For sure, you have to leave the city to get there. That's the that's and the I shame of I'm it. I'm seeing so many people leave, which yeah. is the sad part. I'm stubborn and I'm. I want Miami to work. I'm same. Forci- I'm forcing it to work for others. Same. For myself. I have every um, opportunity to go to New York or Atlanta or LA, and I just don't because it's weird, man. Like sometimes nothing nothing's going on for months on end, but then there's just one thing that happens in Miami, and I'm like, oh my god, it could work. There's hope. There's hope, and then it goes away for like a month, exactly. and then like something else happens, and you're like, holy shit, Miami. Uh oh. Yeah. Like film, like I was working on this Apple TV show for like five months. Oh, is Miami be gonna become the new Hollywood? No. Like after that, it's gone. Like they take their shit and go back to LA. And then like the same for like music. Like there's a couple great things. Like three points happens once a year. Mm-hmm. That happens and it gives you hope. It always happens. I have seasonal hope in Miami. Mm-hmm. Like seasonal hope. Seasonal hope. <laughs> I, three points happens and I'm like, holy shit, this is looking great for us. Mm-hmm. Three points is one of the best festivals in the world. It's the definitely one of the best festivals in the United States, and and then like it goes away, and then like I don't feel that feeling until the next three points again, you know. And you're right, it's like why is there only this one thing that I have an aspiration to do? Perform at three points, like that's like my one of my main goals for this upcoming year is like I should be performing at three points. That's that's where I fit. That's like that's my goal. So I'm putting it out there. I've already, t- I've already, I've already like said it a thousand times. Like that's where I'm gonna be this next year. I hope you attain it, bro. I hope uh, you attain it. Yeah, for sure. Um, Miami's hard, man. It's hard. Um, but we're trying. It's also there's economic factors involved. We have like the highest rent in the U.S. and True. one of the lowest income rates. So people don't have money to go out. People don't have people don't have money to su- to support their own venues if they did have a venue. Yes. That yes. I've seen that happen many times. Yes. It's like y- I can't afford the lease. Mm-hmm. Th- I can't keep paying this lease. Like the money we're getting out of the shows we're throwing is not helping us mm-hmm. fulfill the amount that we need to pay for the lease and stuff. So it's like it happens all the time. Bars. Oh, it's all good. We're c- I'm working live on the air, by the way. So Ben, Aaron, whoever, if you guys are watching, I'm, I'm still working. Don't worry, y'all. Shout out Ben. Shout out Aaron. Oh, that's right. James works for us now. <laughs> <laughs> Media lot. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, James manages our social media. Hell yeah. Uh, good times. Good times. We're going to tell the story for a long time, I feel. Yeah. I feel like in like 10 years when we're like <laughs> super famous, people yeah. are going to be like, you're gonna, we're going to tell people, you know, uh, James used to work for me. We used to work at this TRL's going to be back and we're going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yo, what the hell, man? These guys came from funny times, bro, for sure. Funny times, funny times. But I, I have hope for Miami, man. I mean, I, I talk a lot about it. Um, and I hate to be that kind of guy that's a Debbie Downer about like, what's going on. I have absolute hope. And I and there's like a lot of people that I've met here in Miami, a lot of homies that I, like like Marcus Caesar, Webster the Doc, Moolah, like all these people that I've like, like these are genuine souls that just want to see cool, creative things happen, you know, and then like Annex and you and. We, like I, I do have a lot of hope for for the future. We just need economic foundation. We need structural foundation. Mm-hmm. We need uh, we need support, and that's it's coming. It's slowly, like you said, the it's tides coming. are slowly changing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly for exactly. I think for me, like my mission is like I want to change people's mentality. I think a lot of people like, and as they should, artists should get paid for their work, for their worth, and everything. But at the same time, I feel like they should do a lot of things out of love. They should do a lot. They should support more each other and I'm stubborn on changing that it I've yeah. seen it partially change but more can happen yeah all, all the time all I was gonna time. Uh, talk about I was gonna touch upon this is like you know with especially in rap man in Miami like the main type of shows if you're an upcoming rapper in Miami is like uh, what's the word for it the uh, showcases showcases I fucking hate showcases I will never perform in a showcase. I never have. I never will. Actually, take that back. My first show ever was at the VFW in Hollywood. Uh, King Hoodie. I don't know if you remember King Hoodie. King no. Hoodie. Shout out King Hoodie. I hope you see this. That's a homie. He's he's he Actually, he's one of those people I feel like, oh, well, at least there's some people who are doing some great things out of love and are on a big so level. Tell me about King Hoodie. King Hoodie's King a great, he's, he's a rapper uh, from, I believe he's from Broward. Don't hate me, bro, if you're from Dade. I think he's from Broward. Um, and and he's he's a fucking lyricist, dude. He, he's he's a spitter. And not only that, he just has such great energy. Uh, he's performed in some big places. He was on Sway in the Morning. 
and, and and like he's still here in the city. Like he's like he's great. King Hoodie's dope. And I remember performing my first performance was me, my group, King Hoodie, Coast Contra was there. That's where we met Coast Contra. They're another one that left the city and, and, and got pretty big. Um, they're in California now. Shout out to them. But like that was my first show and it was a it was a showcase. And what I mean by showcase is it's a venue who who couldn't like it's like you can't afford to really pay like a couple a couple good acts so you just like let like 15 artists get on your fucking for free yeah for free like fuck it like just drink or two yeah right and you can't you can't afford to pay anybody but like fuck it i'll bring like 10 people onto this show um and and the thing with my my problem with that and it's still going on by the way i mean like every rap show in miami is a showcase at this point it's like 10 artists you don't know who the fuck they are no one claps for any of these people and, and and you know it's it's mainly just people fucking standing there you know rapping their song. Um, and my problem with that is again is it takes away it takes away from the individuality of the of, of every artist. I mean, especially yeah, like if it's especially if you have something to to mm -hmm. do. Like if you're actually a good performer, even if you were the best performer there. I mean, like it's hard when you're in in a crowd of people. It's hard for people to remember you when you're in a, a list of names. You know, like, especially when your name is, like, right in the middle. Like, no one's going to remember your performance, and that's a shame. Whereas if you, sh you do a show where it's, like, maybe maybe like a one headliner, two openers, you're, you're going to remember the opening acts. I mean, like, mm -hmm. bro, I, I'm thinking back to 2011 when I went to go see Childish Gambino at the Fillmore, at the Jackie, at the Jackie Gleason. And he, you know who opened up for him? Danny oh. Brown. For real? And I didn't know who Danny Brown was. Mm -hmm. But I love Childish nice. Gambino, though. So I was, I was sitting there, and and uh, uh, Danny Brown came on, and the whole fucking Fillmore was shaking, bro. Like I'm like, who is this? Yeah, his energy is crazy. Bro, his <laughs> energy is wild. Shout out Danny Brown. My pride and joy of my career is that Danny Brown told me he likes my music. That's fucking crazy. That's hard. Yeah, That's he, hard. He, he, he had followed me. Shout out Danny Brown. He followed me. He's like, yo, Simple Man is hard as fuck, bro. What the fuck? I was almost crying, bro. Like, I was sitting there like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? He, he followed me. I, I replied to him, yo, thank you for the follow, Danny. I love you. Oh, no problem, bro. Simple man is hard as fuck. I'm like, Whoa. what the fuck? <laughs> we never got the collab going. He said he wanted to get me on a song. We never got it going, but nice, hopefully nice. in the future. But yeah, I didn't know who Danny Brown was, but this is a great example. Like, he came on. He shook the fucking crowd, bro. Like, and ever since then, I was listening to Danny Brown. You know what I mean? He, and he's just, he's infectious, you know, like his style. So, stop! He's infectious, dog. He always does some crazy shit with his music, so, yeah. Super high energy. Um, I think what you're describing for the showcase, the equivalent for that in the DJ world is like a bunch of back to 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 back. It's like, they're fun once in a while, but like. It's cool seeing two acts that you really like go back to back. It is cool, but I'm just saying like, Happening, it yeah. It happening all the time. Overloaded, yeah. yeah overloaded. When it's when it's like every once in a while, it's dope. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have two people you really love. But correct. When correct. it's like a lineup of people you don't know, and it's all back to you're right. Like it's like, yeah. who the fuck are these people? I think shows need to do a better job at, uh, at singling artists out and giving them their moment. Mm -hmm. And th I think we will recognize artists better for that. You know, in a in a, when you go to a show or when you go to an event. Oh my God! I re see. I re I don't know who it was, but I really like this one guy. His name was Lingua. His name was JV Knight. You know, so I think I think it's also at the fault of the venue and the sh and the people who were putting on the show. But yeah, man, it has to. I think that has to change for sure. Facts. Facts. All right. I think we spent enough time talking about myself. I want to talk about you. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Let me get another mimosa before you ask me a question. I don't want to talk about it. Yes. Well, my boy's pouring. Hold up. I wish I had like a like a little ad like oh sp sponsored by talk about a radio <laughs> sponsored by Prosecco. my my boy pouring himself a drink excuse him I was tripping my pants cuz it's so fucking warm in here All right we're back I'm here replying to my boss live on air I am working though There's evidence There's evidence it's true you see the computer in the frame <laughs> Facts Facts all right, let's uh, show the people the your proportions here. Okay. After okay. you, after you pour, after you pour. Pour to the to the bottom so I don't spill from everyone else. <laughs> okay, so it's looking like we got thirty-five percent. 
Prosecco in this cup. No, that's 25. Hold on, let me add it up. So I, like I said before, when I pour my orange juice into my mimosa, it has to feel like an accident. It can't be on purpose. It's like, oh, some orange juice ended up in my cup. Yes, exactly. So check this out. This is how I do it. Show, but get close to the camera. Yeah, let, yeah, let people yeah, see. Yeah. Let people Hopefully see. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Show, show the people. I'm the opposite. <laughs> you want I, I like that juice. Here, pour me some juice, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need more <laughs> I need juice. <laughs> you need to ask for any more I'm a juice boy. Yo, I'm I'm a Tropicana stan. Uh, for the longest time, I was buying Florida's natural, and then they went from natural, 100% juice, to concentrate. I'm like, yeah, fuck that. Hell no. Oh, we got another guest walking by. What's up, Walk dude? Walk on by, my guy. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up man? Up? Um, let's try this juice here. Cheers. Cheers. Look, look at the color in your cup and look at the color in my cup. Your cup looks like my piss after a night out. <laughs> Um, I don't want to talk about it, but I do want to talk about it. Oh, yeah. How did this album come together? So my debut album, I don't want to talk about it. Um, it, it, ha it had different names um, for a long time. I've been so I've been working on this album for two years. Uh, it's, it's been two years in the making. Started in 2020, um, shortly after I had released uh, my last EP, Isolation is a Mirror. Me, Danny and I started working on this album. I don't want to talk about it, and uh, that's not what it was called at first. We've had many different names. We have uh, Master Motion was one of the first names. Um, James, Why? what's up? Why Master Motion? Master Motion. Actually, I have a tattoo on my legs. Master Motion. Oh yeah, you do. Um, and I got it because of that name. Master Motion is uh, just like the idea that like you can't master life; you can only master yourself. So I think that's why I had that name. But like it, it was that. I think the other name for the album was Jamesy, because that's what my family calls me. Jamesy. So it was like very like a like a kind of like a s introspective album, like for that reason at first. Um, and then I think it was like a year ago or maybe less that I was like, "Fuck, I really like the idea of calling it. I don't want to talk about it, and it being about things that you need to talk about, how therapeutic expressing yourself." could really be or not expressing yourself. And, and like, I don't think people understand when I say that. What I mean is like sometimes people want to force you to say what you feel. You haven't even figured it out yet. And it's unhealthy for you to force that out of yourself. So sometimes you shouldn't talk about it. Well, you should spend more time trying to figure out what it is you even feel. Um, and, and so I, that's why I called it that. Um, but it's just kind of like a, a the album's kind of a journal entry of like all the things I've feel I've felt in the last two years really. Mm -hmm. That's why I made the album, man. And um, I, I hope I hope to inspire people to like or encourage people to talk about what they feel, talk about the shit they feel, or and then or if you can't yet, and you don't know, then like dig deeper, bro. Like discover what you feel, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a talker. I like to express myself. Um, Mostly more when people ask me. I'm not really like a self, like, I'm also very, Facts. what's the word for it? Like you wait for people to bring it out of you? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I wouldn't say bring it out, out of me, but, sorry, replying. You all good, bro? It's my boss. Shout out Ben. Ben? <laughs> um. I feel like I'm just so, like, I don't want to say, it, like, I hate saying I'm so grounded, but, like, even my therapist was like, oh, you're so grounded, bro. I'm just like, you're so self-aware. You are a Taurus. Taurus shit. Astrology, bro. Hell uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Gang. What are you? I'm a Libra. Are you, are you a Libra? I'm a Libra. I got the Libra sign on my, on my, on my. Is uh, that what it is? Yeah, it's an elephant with a Libra sign you in it. You definitely have a Libra lyric in one of your songs. Do I? I think I do. Libra no, I think I do. I don't remember. <laughs> now that you're asking me, I don't know. Sometimes I forget my lyrics, man. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I forget I ever said that. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, okay, another thing about the album that you, uh, since, you are, since we're on that topic, yeah. this album is interesting. I haven't written anything for the album. I mean, like two songs were written, and that's because they're old songs. 
from like a year and a half ago. So that's Interesting. Lost and Confused, which is the second track, and then Health and Pleasure, the second to last track, are the two songs that I actually wrote. But all the other songs on the album were just freestyled, I guess. Like Danny and I would just sit there and like I would start freestyling and we'd web lyrics together on the go and make the song in like 30 minutes. Danny and I have been getting to the point where we're like making songs in like fucking 20, 30 minutes. Don't want to dance. We made that in 20 fucking minutes. Like that's and that's not even bra- I'm not I don't I, that's not something to brag about because you can make a really shitty fucking song in 20 minutes. But I'm just proud that Danny and I have been able to do that. You know, like when you I've always said, like when you have something to say, you don't need to write it. You just say it, you know, and like that's like a big thing with this album. Like when I, ha- I had s- I had shit to talk about, yeah. I didn't need to write it down. I'm telling you, like this is what I feel, you know, so that's it's interesting. I, 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 I barely wrote. I can't even consider myself a songwriter for this album. I didn't write it. Didn't write the album. Well, you are, bro. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, it came out. It just came out. I got some Taurus in me though. I got my I'm a Taurus moon. Oh, me too, bro. That's why me and you get along so well. True, true. But also because I I I base a lot of my decisions on emotion, and you're a very grounded person. So sometimes you give me reality checks. You're like, bro, listen. But that's what I like about emotional people. Y'all bring y'all bring you like I'm so grounded that I'm just like complacent. But like no, I think like things like. DJing, being around people, you know, it brings me up, it uplifts me, it gets me silly, you know, it gets me. Facts. It brings, like, the real side of me out, you know. Facts, facts. It's my rising Sagittarius. <laughs> is, that, is that what your rising is? Your yeah. Sagittarius. <laughs> what am I? I think I'm a. Rising Mahon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I am, dude. I'm a, my girlfriend knows, I don't know. Uh, I'm like um, a Libra, Taurus Moon. My rising is mm. Virgo, I think. I don't know. Fuck, I don't know. I hate Virgos, though. Mm-hmm. Fuck Virgos. Is there any Virgos in this room? You guys aren't Virgos, right? Hopefully not. No, hopefully not. <laughs> um, I would agree. I think your album very much is a journal entry. Um, how did the whole, like, radio aspect of it, like, kind of, like, come to play? So I've, al- I've always been super fascinated with, uh, um, I've always been super fascinated with, uh, what's the term everyone uses for these kind of albums? Like, uh, oh, like, uh, like thematic albums, you know, albums that have a theme. I've always loved albums like that, you know, and uh, this, I, I told myself, like, when I make an album, it's not going to just be a collection of songs. This shit is going to be a fucking story. It's going to be a movie. And uh, the radio aspect, I've always wanted to do something like that, you know, like Channel Orange. I've always wanted to do, like, albums that, like, in between the music, there's something going on. In between the music, I like the skits, like the skits yeah. are like little, but little things in, in yeah, it's that I love skits, but my problem with skits is sometimes, like for instance, here's a good example, uh, late registration, Kanye West, okay. way too many skits, way too many skits. People would disagree with me. I think it's way too many. When you have that many songs that are just skits, you know, like the tracks themselves are just skits. I hate that. Some of them suck. Some of them are banger. Yeah, um, I have one track on the album that's just. Uh, a, a skit, and that's the Nagamine interlude. Shout true, out, Na- true, shout true. out, Natalie. Shout out, Nagy. Um, but yeah, it came about really like the radio aspect came about really because uh, the juxtaposition of being the the DJ host and the the caller. Um, I thought that was interesting. Like, it's interesting to like l- like delve deeper into what I feel by being both the listener and the talker. Mm-hmm. Um. I also really wanted to like get people on the album to speak like as callers that were have nothing to do with the uh, music itself, um, and just kind of like, I so I wrote most of those. I wrote all the skits. Mm-hmm. I wrote it for them in script format, and uh, I just had them record it. But like, it I feel like when it comes out of their mouths, it's like they really are telling me what they feel, and I, I try to make it as vague as possible, or at least as like, like relatable as possible that anyone okay. anyone could be saying this you know so uh, the, the radio aspect came about just by wanting to make a thematic album why'd you pick those people to do your your little skits and intros and stuff to songs so i so i picked chris the first caller sun raw i picked him because he's an actor i've worked with in the past and he's great at reading lines mm-hmm. um and i love him and he has such a beautiful face and i uh was gonna ca- so you know originally i was gonna make it like a little short film where we filmed different scenarios in which listeners were listening to the radio, like in a car, getting ready to go out uh, at school, 
and I was going to film that and make it a little short film. And so I picked him because he's an actor and he just like he has a great face and a great voice. Um, Natalie, I picked because uh, she's the homie and she's always been one of the bi- my biggest supporters. Yes, she has. Um, and so is Caitlin. I love. Uh, she's the last um, person on the album. She's a, she's a, a, a longtime friend. Uh, I picked Val because he's a, he's like one of my closest uh, artist friends. Shout out Val. Um, and then I think I just picked them because they just I imagined what it would look like if I actually filmed it, and I wanted like specific faces so chris val natalie and caitlin would have looked so good on camera but they all live in different places so val and chris live here Nagy lives in la caitlin lives in texas so it just it didn't work out that way but that's why i picked them yeah gotcha is there a certain song on the album that releases the most emotion for you yeah uh temper so temper temper, temper isn't my favorite song mm-hmm. um off Rip is my favorite song, I'd say. Off-rip. And Off Rip is the most recent song we made, Danny and I. That was like the last song on the album. Would you say it's more current to your life? Yeah, 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 for sure. And also Off Rip is like one of them, besides I don't want to talk about it, like the song, Off Rip is like, I think is the quintessential song on the album. Why? Because it's literally tell me what you feel, Off Rip, you know. It's tell literally me what you feel, Off, off Rip. rip and off it's lit- rip. yeah, it's literally about just like say what you feel when you feel it. You know, don't wait. Don't let it bubble inside. Don't let it build inside. So that's why it's my favorite. But Temper is the song that makes me the most emotional because um, the lyric content, dude. I mean, really, like, um, literally, like, the first the, like, the first words on that song is, uh, um, sometimes we're afraid about the thoughts that live inside our brain. You know, sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes that makes us right all along. Mm. You're not alone, you know. Mm. And then the hook is, it's ordinary. It's only ordinary. True. And it's like about like making people feel normal for the things they feel. Sometimes we're, we're made to feel crazy for the things that we feel. Mm-hmm. And like and that's like very harmful. Has that happened to you? Yeah, all the time. I mean, it happens all the time. Um, directly and indirectly. I feel like Temper is like a song about how like it's okay to feel what you feel. You're not crazy for feeling what you feel. It's accepted. It's ordinary. You know, don't worry about it. Like the things that you feel are ordinary, we all feel it. You're not alone, you know. And that's like a very comforting. So it feels like a hug in a song. Yeah, it's a hug it for sure. And and it's interesting. It's one of those songs that it makes me emotional. Like I've cried listening to that song. Just like, not even because like it's a great song or anything. It's just because like it spoke to me. Like, and it's weird. It's like my voice. So it's weird. I'm like, oh my god. Like sometimes I feel, um, what it, what the song is talking about, and it makes me a little emotional. So that's 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 the song that makes me the most emotional for sure. But but yeah, off rip, um, off rip, and don't do it, Penny. Those are my favorite songs on the album. Those two. How did the Saint Pedro uh, remix of uh, Tired and Lonely come around? Tired and Lonely is a song Slim and I made in 2018, 2019, right? I don't know. Fuck, someone fact check me. Um, and we, it was just like this basic beat that I had made, which I still, I, I love that beat, but it's literally such a simple song that someone I made. S- um, Danny heard that, so he's heard that song before, but when I, p- I played it from the other day, like not the other day, like months ago, and he was like, dude, I fucking love this song. Give me the stems. Like, I want to do something. And I was just sitting there like, all right, yeah, I'll let it happen. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think we were going to do anything with that. He made like a fucking banger. He just sent it to you? He yeah. Just like no, I was uh, there with him. I was oh, watching. Okay, okay, I okay, witnessed okay. him like pick up the bass and play that bass line and make it like a tame Impala, very like <laughs> just like a fucking bounce. And then when he then he found a sample and chopped up a sample for the second half of the song. So if you you know, obviously if you notice like first half is one yeah. vibe, second half is a different vibe. That do that. Yeah, it's a completely it's different make vibe. More popular to do that, but I, I love that. I and Slimo, it's like that part for Slimo is Slimo. The part for me is me. So it's funny. Like, it's like it really represents our two personalities. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting. That's how it came about, though. Danny was just a, a big fan of that song. And he's just like, I want to make my own version of it. And and it was so good that I was like, dude, we got to throw this on the album. You know? Beautiful. Beautiful. Fuck yeah. What has been your biggest moment of happiness in this whole, like, album creation or, like, release process? My biggest, hmm. Like, what's what's been the point that you're just like, damn. Like we did something? Like, we did something here. I think it was the, uh, hmm, that's a, good, that's a good question. 
I think it was the moment. Um, there's a moment in the studio, and um, for a long time, it's like when you make an. It's like when you come up with an idea. You know, like it's a good idea, but there's something missing. You know, I think we made off rip that studio session um, where we made off rip, and I'm like, fuck it, let's put it on the album. This song is so good. When we put it on the album, Danny and I drew the track list on a whiteboard, and we mapped out the uh, the structure of the album. That was the moment I was like, "Wow, we got an album, like a good album. This is a good album." And in ten years, when people listen back, and when I listen back to this album, I'm gonna be proud because it's like just a perfect representation of what I was feeling. It's a great sound. It's not just what I was feeling. It's a, it's a good sound. Like these are good songs. So um, we mapped it out so that the first two songs are like the first act of a movie. The f- the, f- the next the next uh, like six songs are like the second act, and like the last three songs are the third act of a movie. We mapped it out so it felt like beginning, middle, end. Feel that. You yeah, and feel when that you album. listen to the album from beginning to end, it feels like a, a start, a journey, and a conclusion. And that's what I wanted to nail because I'm a filmmaker and I wanted to uh, incorporate my three act structure mm-hmm. into a album. I always say that artists should watch movies mm. and filmmakers should listen to albums. Mm. You should make a movie like an album. Mm. You should make an album like a movie. Mm. That's that's my that's I think if you would ask me. What you? What do I think sets me apart? It's that. It's Major key on that. Yeah, it's it's that I have the mind of a filmmaker and an artist. So it's sep- it def- I think that separates me. This boy Danger is out here. Absolutely. Are you still like on the high of I don't want to talk about it, or do you feel like you're already like thinking towards the next project? I already know what I want to make next. Um, and and I've like d- detached myself from the album so I could sell it. I'm like in this. Sell- I'm like in selling mode right now. Like I'm like I. Now people should listen to this, not because I like it, but because you just should listen to this. You know, I've like already like separated myself from the album. What I always say, man, like as an artist as, or as a creator in general, like whether you're an artist or you're whatever the fuck you are, when you make something, and it's complete, and you put it out to the world, it is no longer yours. It's not yours anymore. It's it's yours now. It's not mine. It's yours. This album is now for the world or for whatever uh, whatever audience it's for. It's for them. It's not for me anymore. It's not mine. It's yours now. And um, I'm already I already know what I want to do next. But I'm still in like sell mode. I want to get it out there. I wanna I want to get to this. I want I want to get to the point where I'm like, uh, I, I'm like the my music is like sustainable. Like I could make a living off my music. I'm not there yet. I'm not. I haven't sold enough. I haven't performed enough. But, like, I want to get to the point where I'm, like, my life is, a, is being an artist, you know? Um, and that's where I'm at. I'm, like, really focused on, like, trying to sell my shit. And uh, I already know what I'm doing next. For sure, my next album is going to be a lot more dance. Um, electronic music is probably where I I'm going next. So I love it. I yeah. love it. I think it's just, it's just so fitting from where I'm from, though. Like, mm. Miami would eat it up if I made, like, an electronic music, uh, an electronic album. I think they should eat this album up. I think... I think the themes you express, the vulnerability, the happiness you express is all things we all feel, but maybe we're afraid to say so. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's like ulti- ultimately what I wanted to as a goal for the album is like to make people feel more confident in mm-hmm. their feelings, you know, while they listen to this. It's, that's my goal. That was that was my goal and it, it still is. So when um, when you listen to it, I just hope you find some courage to feel what you feel, you know. You heard it here first, people. By the way, super random, but in the very beginning, we're talking about being knighted. It's if you're a resident or if you're a British person. Oh, you looked it up? Yeah. It's if you're a resident? Yes. So I could live in London for a, lo- for a long time and they'll knight and me? And just if I do something cool, yes. though, right? Like and if not, it's just honorary. But like, you don't get the sir or dumb. I want to be sir. Yeah. I want to be sir J.V. So Knight. So J.V. Knight? It sounds like I should be, right? That kind of goes hard. Yeah, it goes super hard. It sounds yeah. like you should be like... Okay, like if I get knighted, and this is the promise, you can hold me accountable. If I get knighted in my life, I will change my artist name to Sir J.V. Knight. Sir J.V. Knight. Yes, for a fact. For a fact. Oh, we got another guest. Sir <laughs> Ty <laughs> Davison. <laughs> Preparing for Diafano tomorrow. Y'all, sh- y'all should 100% slide out to Diafano here. <laughs> lots, lots of special guests here. A lot of guests. Today. 
So, he's going to be in and you out. Good, bro. You, you heard it. All good. Little sneak peek for tomorrow. Go, bro. Hop, 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 hop. Some good cardio. Yeah, good cardio. Uh, I actually am really fascinated. Uh, I want I want my next... Actually, my next project is going to be a pseudo-deluxe version of this album. And it's going to be... What does that mean? Like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a deluxe, but it is. So, it's going to be a remixed version of the album. Mm. And I want a lot of my friends to remix the songs. You know I offered. You know I want to do it. Yeah. You know I said I, want, I was like, off rip. I want you. I want you to do a remix. I want Gerardo to do a remix. Whoever else. Brohas, I know it was interested in doing something. Shit. I want I want you guys to touch it and, and, and you know, touch it good, you know? Ooh, I can touch it good <laughs> all day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but for real, though, I want to make, like, um, I want to make, like, electronic versions of some of these songs, like techno versions of some of these songs and see what the fuck you guys do. I'm really interested in seeing what Gerardo does because I know Gerardo's going to do a weird twist on something. You know, Fucking mad scientist. I know he wants to do health and pleasure, so I'm excited yeah. to see. And it's such a weird choice. Like I was like, really? You want nah, to do health? It makes sense for him. It makes so much sense I, for I him. can't wait. I can't wait to see what he does. Gonna so ready. I'm going to send you guys the stems and hopefully please, please, please hopefully please, we get please, something please, going. Please, please. Uh, even if it's like a five, six track mm -hmm. project, it'll... I mean, that's, that's lit. I mean, I love remix projects. Like, Linkin Park is my favorite band of all time. Reanimation is godly. And is that a remix yes, album of yes. what? Of like their first two projects, like Hybrid Theory and Meteora. Like wow. Yeah. Crazy. Or, or like the Jay Z album, like where they collab. Oh, uh, true. That's right. I forgot yeah, they did yeah, that. Yeah. That's crazy. That is like. That's, that's right. God he did Encore. Shit. He did yeah. a lot of those songs. That's yes, right. Yes. Yes. Like I think more artists should do, do that. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so like we were talking about like the back to back aspect of the mm -hmm. artist, or like I think that. Facts. Like magic there. That's. So instead of a deluxe album, that's probably going to be the deluxe version of the album, just mm. remixes. I like it. I like it. Just do like I Don't Want to Talk About It remix yeah. album. Yeah, those collaborations are cool. I mean, we have, um, uh, what, what's the Drake and 21? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Her, Her, Loss. Loss. Her Loss. That's hard, bro. I was just listening to yeah. it on the way over here. That's a hard-ass fucking album. It kind of is. You know, I think with, with the big artists like 21 Savage and Drake, we get like kind of lost in like, oh, it's just hype. You know, it's just it's just Drake and 21 Savage. But I was, I was that's just hard, bro. Like. like like, don't be wrong, like, I, I love Lil Baby, but that last album, you know? Um, yeah. But, like... Wait, what's that song that he just put out? <laughs> what's that song that he's just like, hey, what's that? What's I know you're hey. talking about. Hey. And, and every video he does is just him waving awkwardly. Like, th that shit is so whack, bro. Like, I like Lil Baby, but not like that, not bro. Like that. Not like that, bro. Not like that. Not where you can do some whack shit and we accept it, you know? Or I took that wah. No, that's hard. It, it is hard. That shit is, bro, Lil Yachty on, on fucking <laughs> Poland. That shit is, I took the wah. <laughs> that's just some true SoundCloud rapper shit. Yeah, he's he's the SoundCloud king at this point. I oh, mean, I, undisputed. 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 I mean, I mean, there's other people. Like, there was Smoke Perp and Ski Mask for a long time. Mm -hmm. X was, like, the king of SoundCloud yes. forever. Rest in peace. And uh, Lil Peep was there, but Lil Yachty's the one that's, has uh has a uh, has survived the test of time for God sure. Tier. God yeah, tier. like he's got in there. Lil Yachty's fire. I've always liked Lil Yachty. Lil Vamp over here. Shit was hard, bro. Um, you have some closing words for the people before you you get funky on here and you start singing. Um, I think my message to anyone watching is just, it's kind of what I've already said. Uh, be yourself. Uh, be you. I think the only way to really learn who you are is like exploring through things that you love. So if you're having a hard time figuring out what it is you do or who you are, start with what interests you. Yes. Then it turns into a love. Yes. It turns into passion. Yes. Then it turns into a career. Yes. So I think first step is like love. Find what you love, pursue that. Just keep going. Don't worry about what it's going to give you. Don't worry about the money you're going to make. Don't worry about any of that. Just worry about the, the love it gives you. I make music because making music makes me happy making music provides love for me and then uh i want to make a career out of that i want to make a career out of love so that's my message career out of love i love yeah. that my, that's my message you're so beautiful man thank you that's my message for for uh anyone watching so well said listen to this listen to this guy he knows what he's talking about yeah yeah with that buckies isaac said come get some free beer if you're free oh yeah <laughs> where are we going free beer for free <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he said, come get some beer, beer, if you're free. Uh, if you're free, okay, okay, okay. Um, you ready to do this, Mike? Let's go. I'm Let's about do it. This? All Let's right. do this. Thanks for joining, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Miami Community Radio. Really appreciate it. 
Should I use this mic? 